Cougs house. All right. The Houston Cougars look to get back on track this weekend with Sam Houston State. That's not going to be an easy task or certainly not as much as it might look like in the books. We brought an expert to tell us all about it. Let's jump on in. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, the daily podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Ainsworth, here to break down all things Cougs. If you're a U of H fan or just a hater who came to stop by, please be sure to subscribe down below. That way we can lay the Cougs into your news feed each and every day. We appreciate you making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. And welcome back to YouTube channel. If that is where you have found us, it's still good to see you again. Remember, we're doing a giveaway every 250 subscribers. But we also have uh, had a couple contest winners that are receiving some tickets this weekend. Uh, still waiting to hear from our winners. Those are at Juan Trejo 938 for talking about how much fun it was to watch that 2016 UH versus OU football game. And Aubrey Morgan 4872 for talking about the Louisville game in 2016. Uh, that one might be my favorite just because the hype with Lamar Jackson. So remember, those two folks reach out to me. We're going to work on getting it to the game this weekend and watch Houston play Sam Houston State. Yes, Houston plays Sam Houston State this weekend. We brought in a guest, Corey, to talk all about it. Corey works for Dave Campbell's Texas Football, the Football Bible here in the state of Texas. He specializes in the smaller side of college football. So let's jump on in. And we are joined by Corey Hogue of Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Uh, Corey, you do a lot of covering across all of football in the state of Texas. I'm glad we got you on when you had a free moment in between <laughs> the end of whatever last week would have been in high school or college football, depending, and then the start of the next one. <laughs> Corey, yeah. how are you doing? I'm doing great. It, it, this is, it is weird how the schedule works during a season because uh, anymore fans turn the page right after the game into the next week. So – you know, Saturday night is some recap stuff. Sunday, maybe a little. But by Monday, your eyes are totally focused on the next week. And so it starts fast and furious on Monday. And and usually by Wednesday night, Thursday morning, I'm, I've got it pretty settled to start everything again on Thursday night. Well, and you cover a lot of high school football and are the guy in Texas for non-FBS football, which means you've got a lot of experience with San Diego State before this season, but you also have recently taken on with Dave Campbell's football and the Republic of Football, work with Sam Houston State. Um, before we get too far into talking about the Bearcats, what is that work like and what, it, what can you tell people about what you've been doing with them so people can know where to go after this? TexasFootball.com. That's where you will find uh, my work for any of the non-FBS. Uh, you can find any, uh, you can find uh, all kinds of stuff. We got all kinds of podcasts, high school, college, you name it. If there's another team that you're interested in, too, we've, we've got podcasts over there for all the – every school is covered. The 13 FBS schools each have their own. Uh, I have one that I, I do with the non-FBS, so we hit the, we hit the highlights. Uh, also, I do cover high school for the Times Record News uh, here in Wichita Falls, so I kind of the Wichita Falls area – and then I, I didn't tell you before the show, too, but I cover Cowboys home games for the Times Record News as well. So it, it's uh, the schedule is pretty hectic. My football weekends run from Thursday through Sunday. And then, like I said, Monday is turning that page right off the bat <laughs> into the next week. And it's like, hang on, because football season goes. <laughs> Well, and it really does take off. We have that much ball to cover. Um, and I, I mean, that's a lot. I, and keeping up with just the Houston Cougars, I can only imagine how it, what it's like to keep up with all those teams. Um, all those programs, should say. The St. Houston Bearcats moved into FBS and in Conference USA relatively, I mean, like just recently, right? Um, yeah. And this is a very new thing for them. But they've got a guy steering the ship that has to be as good as anyone you could ask for in Casey Keeler, the head football coach there. We talked a little bit in pre-pod about, about his resume, but I, I bluntly admitted to you, and I'll admit on air, I did not realize how impressive his resume was until I started doing some background work here. As someone who's covered them for a little bit longer, talk us through who Casey Keeler is. He's one of the best people I, I, I know. Uh, he is a very good person. And he treats people fairly. He's going to tell you the truth. And I always appreciate anyone who's going to tell me the truth. 
Uh, he he knows what he wants to say and how he wants to say it, and he gets his points across. He's got a narrative. He, he is very much a psychological mind. Like, this guy understands what makes people tick, what makes people go, and uh, that's a lot of why he is the only coach ever to win an FCS championship at two different schools. He won it at Delaware with some guy named Joe Flacco, <laughs> and then, <laughs> then he won it in the spring of – of 2020 he and the what's most impressive about him when i first started really covering sam houston in the non-fbs schools at dave campbell's in 2018 they were running more of a high-paced offense really fast paced move up and down the field but they were and they were winning they would get to the playoffs though and they would get obliterated so he decided he made a, a decision to change complete philosophy. And he said, I know it's going to take a couple of years. I'm going to have to weather some storms through this. And sure enough, man, they, they, you know, 2019, 2018 was, was not the greatest. 2019 wasn't that great, but come 2020, when that spring season hit, he had it set the way he wanted to. He had changed that roster to fit exactly what he wanted to do with just a little slower pace and really more defense. And because of that, they won that national title. And it's kind of odd now because you watch them transition into FBS, this being their first season, and they've only played two games. That defense is one of the best in the country already. It just – but the offense, the thing he's known for <laughs> is is what's holding him back right now. But again, man, you're in FBS. It's a new world for him. I, I think some some Bearcats fans maybe expected a little more success early. And there's been a lot of chatter, but my goodness, they've played BYU and Air Force in the first two games. It those are not shabby losses, and you hung tight with them and were in the games in the third and fourth quarter. I don't think you can ask for much more out of a young program right now, and a lot of that's because of uh, of Coach Keeler. Well, and we, I kind of feel like Air Force remains to be seen of what that you know what they look like on the season at the season's end. But I think it's fair to say that when you look at BYU, I mean, they walked into and beat Arkansas, you know, just last week, holding that team to fourteen point. I mean, they put up thirty eight on an SEC team, right? Like that's a yeah. impressive defense, to say the least, down there in Sam Houston. Um, what you mentioned that you know the average Bearcat fan might have expected more success, which is, I mean, a little staggering, but I, I guess understandable when you look at the stuff they had done in at the FCS level. Yeah. What do the Bearcats? I mean, they look at this schedule. They look at Conference USA. I mean, are they expecting to win this thing very soon? I mean, is it, how soon does that happen? Oh no, they they expect to win soon. Uh, you know, I think we. I set my expectation around four wins this year. I, uh, I still think that's possible, uh, even though, you know, the, the offense has got to get going. And when I'm sure we'll get into that as to what kind of has been holding it back. And, uh, you know, you are – they played good teams. BYU is a solid team. Air Force, you know, I think they played Utah State last week, uh, another team. And Air Force is a good team. It, they're going to run the ball on you. They're going to impose their will on you. That triple option is hard to prepare for, hard to get ready for. Uh, and to be honest with you, coming into Houston, they had a bye week, or what, what Casey Keeler calls a get better week. And when you tell someone we're here to get better this week, that's what usually will happen, right? It's a psychology thing. So they had their get better week. I'm interested to see what we get from them on Saturday. All right, I got to pause for a second to talk about something that everyone is going to need, even if they don't want to need, and that's some supplies in case of an emergency. Everyone should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and it gives you the peace of mind that you are not just hoping to have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand 
Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication, delivery, and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 in value by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using code Locked On at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code Locked On. Well, and I'd like to transition to talking about this defense that's going to carry them to any success they have this season, it appears. Yeah. Because, like I guess I mentioned they held BYU to 14 points. BYU would later put up 38 on Arkansas. They held Air Force to 13 points. Am I checking this correctly? Yeah. Um, and that's a difficult offense to stop because it is so, so unique, right? Regar- and I think they're talented this year, too. I'm sorry if I didn't come across that way. But regardless of the talent on the field, it's just a once-in-a-year yeah. kind of system. Um who, when you look at the defense, who stands out? What jersey numbers do Houston Cougars need to be looking out for? Um, and who does like the offensive line need to make sure they check every play? Or who does Donovan Smith, quarterback at Houston, need to be looking for? Like, who are the guys? Well, one guy was injured against Air Force, and he is really the name, I believe, and it's Markel Perry. Wherever Markel Perry lines up, you better know where he is because he is going to find his way to terrorize your offense some way, some shape, some form. You know, you mentioned Air Force and how impressive it is for that offense. Sam Houston started preparing for the triple option during part of fall camp. They spent time during fall camp preparing for that because they knew that was coming early and they know how hard that is to prepare for it. That's just one another example of what makes Casey Keeler such a great coach that he understood the need to add a little more preparation time during camp for that triple option and to face that. And he did, you know, but th- this defense, it's what they're going to ride on. And we knew that coming in. We knew this defense was, was good. I wasn't expecting it to be this good. I really am a little surprised that it is this good against such solid competition all over the field. You got to watch out for these guys, you know, defensive line, front seven is as good as anybody. Defensive line, linebacker core, you, you, we were talking about it before we started recording about how good the linebackers are, how good the defensive line is. They all work together. I think this week we might find out about the back end. I think Houston is the first team that has the ability to maybe test the secondary a little more BYU wasn't able to do it. Air Force doesn't. So that that's what uh, I'm interested to see this week is how Houston's able to kind of uh, handle, and if they can, get into that secondary and maybe show another weakness of the defense we hadn't seen yet. You mentioned Marco Perry. I think that's interesting because he's listed the same position a kid I was impressed with in watching what I could find on YouTube of, of the Bearcats in Isaiah Nixon. Um, yeah. That's a jack. That's kind of a hybrid position. He's listed as jack on their um, on their depth chart but that's it that requires a lot of athleticism um marco perry has not been on film yet so what can folks be expecting to see this saturday <laughs> uh, he he's a beast uh markel perry will just terrorize wherever he lines up and you're still going to see isaiah too you're they, they are so deep and, and their depth goes i mean they have built it they really have and they knew this was coming for a couple of years in advance so they were able to get, uh, you know, some guy. Markel Perry, though, was already there. That shows you the level that Casey Keeler recruited at that place. He's, most of these guys were already recruited before they even found out they were going Conference USA. A lot of them he held back and redshirted last year in their final year in FCS. They weren't eligible for the playoffs anyway, so he held them and redshirted a whole lot of guys, about 20 guys. Uh, to come back and play this year guy you know a lot of them are on the defense and a lot of them are on the offense too um they run an, an interesting defense that requires a lot of athleticism in it um houston cougar we just played uh tcu and saw another odd front team with a multitude of linebackers and safeties and kind of a lot of similar body types line up all over the field um the cat leading them in no pun intended the cat leading them in tackles is it getting trevor williams um is he just the Mike linebacker making every play as you see it, or is it a funneling? It what what's what's he do that's so special? He's got great instincts. He knows how to read where the offense is going, where that ball is going to go, and then he goes and finds it and he makes the play. That's what makes Trevor so special. He's just he can just 
destroy you by finding that ball and he gets off of blocks real well. He's he's a hard guy to keep contained as well. Um the the defensive line, um, I guess the whole front seven, as you mentioned, is the strength. I would have admit admittedly would have assumed I was gonna pull up their depth chart and see a bunch of transfers because they moved up a division and you'd think that'd be a chance for kids that like knew they had some connection or knew they, that the Bearcats had seen them on film to be like, Oh, I can go get into the FBS level. If I can get a transfer portal work, look into there. Right. Yeah. They really like in their starting six up front, just have one guy. And admittedly, he is a grad transfer from Georgia state and Akeem Smith. Right. So it's not like, it's not like he's some fallback from a big time power program or anything. I do think he was trying to move up in the world in the division. Um, but they've got the same guys that they've had at the FCS level uh, yep. for a while now. Do you think there's some continuity there in playing for a while under the defensive coordinator, uh, Joe, Joe Morris? I want to talk about more in a second, but is there something there about having done the system for a minute? Oh, uh, definitely. Uh, you want to know, you want to see an offense or a defense do well. You leave them under uh, the same coordinator, if, especially if they're good and successful, for a period of time, and you will see them succeed a lot. Uh, you know, take, for example, another team I cover, Stephen F. Austin. Uh, last year, they had almost an entirely new defensive staff, and they struggled until about conference season. That's typically what you get. So not having as much turnover, that's one key. The continuity is key. These guys have been in the system. But that also shows you not only how they recruit, but how they develop. They recruited those guys when they were FCS. <laughs> Right, like these yeah. guys came to a place that at the time didn't have very nice facilities. As far they've redone the locker rooms and facilities at at uh, Bauer Stadium in the last few years. So these players came in, they put in that work, and they were coming to an FCS school. And this is the kind of talent that they got. So uh, I think only good things are ahead for this defense. Good things are ahead for this team, as long as they can uh, keep KC Keeler and he can get that offense going again. But uh, now back to your point about that defense. It there is some about that continuity, and that is part of what is wrong with the offense because they've had they're they're on their third offensive coordinator in three years, you know, and so it's been an issue the last couple of years. The defensive coordinator got there. Um, my note says he got there in January 2021, which is notable because they won the national championship in the spring of 2021. Yes. Um, Joe Morris comes in with a background from West Texas A&M. He's a defensive line guy, which guy from my own heart. People listen to the show know that I'm, I'm a line trenches guy. Um, what has Joe Morris done to that defense? Not that they weren't good before, but they've been really good ever since. Joe Morris has a connection to West Texas A&M, which is a Division II school that I cover. And I believe his connection is to... Uh, the Carthels, I believe Don Carthel, Colby Carthel, now the head coach at Stephen F. Austin that I mentioned a minute ago. Uh, they are defensive gurus. They they are known for their defense. They always have. He learned a lot there at, at West Texas A&M from that. But, you know, he, he brings a – it's not a real attacking defense. They don't take – a lot of gambles, but they they execute. They are a solid, a sound, a very fundamental defense, and they won't make just a whole lot of mistakes. You're going to have to earn your yards. Well, and speaking of earning yards, I don't mean to transition something poor or porous. I don't know. Maybe those two words sound alike for the, for certain reasons here. I would imagine if you'd have told someone at Sam Houston that, especially back in the in the twenty teens, that if they were going to hold teams to fourteen points, thirteen points, they'd be winning some football games. Um, they have not. Now Houston's offense has had its struggles this year too, with a new quarterback. They've kind of had a three headed circus in calling plays. Um, and we've you know broken all that down for folks that are, are new to the show here. But um, what is what is going on with the offense? Because again. As great as the defense has been, I don't. I, they haven't scored a touchdown yet this season. All right, so if you want to try to get back into the action, get back in the win column this weekend, much like our Houston Cougars, there's no better place to do that than at FanDuel because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. You place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win 
or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. This weekend, they've got Houston and Sam Houston. This is Houston with, with Houston being a 12 and a half point favorite. The over under set for a defensive struggle at 38.5. I'm thinking I'm actually hitting the over. I think things hit their stride this weekend. I'm definitely taking Houston. And I'm telling you that you should definitely be taking it at fanduel.com. That's at fanduel.com slash locked on to kick off this season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. I, they haven't scored a touchdown yet this season. No, they've only scored a field goal. <laughs> so what's going on? <laughs> you know, well, first, I would say the over-under is 38, and the under this week seems like a really solid bet. <laughs> yes, yes. just does. Uh, for the, the first thing, and it's something to point out, BYU has a very good defense. And Air Force has a very, very good defense. I think Air Force hasn't allowed a team – to score 20 points in like 14 games. It's insane the stats they have. BYU, really solid defensively. Look, they look how they, they went into Arkansas. They held them yeah. in the 30s. So we know that defense is good. So part of it is the competition. I think another another part is they the philosophy was not correct the first two weeks. They tried to lean on the run. They know their defense is good. They tried to lean on the run, but they don't run block real well, and that's a big problem. So they were trying to lean on the run. They weren't getting yards. They're not sustaining drives. But Keeler hit on it in his press conference Tuesday. He said, we've got to do something well. If we're not going to run block well, we got to pass block well. And they did against BYU. They did not against Air Force. So I think during their get better week, Again, they like to call it that. Uh, during the get better week, they decided that, I, you know, they're looking at how to get the ball in the playmakers' hands more, to get them more involved. I think we're going to see less of the traditional running game from them. I would expect to see them try to get the ball out quickly, maybe some screen passes, try to use the passing game, which they do block well to set up and maybe get some things going. Look, this offense just needs to find some rhythm. Right. And if they can, they're not going to be able to run the ball. We know that. You don't need to try to rely on running the ball 40 times a game. It's not going to work. You're going to have to throw the ball. You're going to have to throw it about 50, 60 times a game because that can be your running game with the short, short passes and stuff. So I think we're going to see that. I, uh, I kind of hope that we see that because I'd like to see the offense actually get to the end zone soon. <laughs> and I think. I think if they don't get – I think if they come out of this week and they're held without a touchdown, things are going to start to really pick up around around Sam Houston because these offensive woes started last year and have continued, and people are about tired of it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, the quarterback um... – He's a North Texas kid, I want. I think, uh, right? That's where Prosper is. Um, yeah, yeah, that's in the Metroplex area, close to Frisco. But he, um, he initially played some Patriot League ball up at Lafayette College, um, and transferred back to Sam Houston. Um, what What's the read on Keegan Shoemaker? I mean, is he a a big guy with a cannon? Is he more of a scatty kind of guy? What's he do well that the defense of Houston needs to be on the lookout for? Because it was, I mean, Houston's had their ups and downs. Being the first team to give up a touchdown to Sam Houston is not on their to do list. They don't, they don't want to do that. <laughs> no, I understand. And I will say that, uh, you know, well, well, you got to be careful because this is a team that if this offense is able to, to find a way to score a couple and maybe catch a break, this is a team that can beat Houston right now. I mean, Houston has been struggling I w- because of the defense. Without that defense, I wouldn't give Sam Houston a, a chance. But because of that, that defense is so good. I think they got healthier over the last week. I think that they're going to come into Houston ready to go. And also, it's close, right? I mean, these, te- these towns are just a few minutes apart, basically. So you're going to probably get a good contingent of Bearcat fans uh, in there as well. Um, man, I will say this offense, they're going to have to get it going. Uh, what do I think that Houston's going to have to worry about with Keegan Shoemaker is more along the lines of 
if he's in there, <laughs> to be honest with you. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a chance this week we see uh, a Grant Gannell at times as well. I think that uh, if uh, if it's not operating now, is it, it's not all been Keegan's fault. And Keegan Shoemaker is not a guy with a big arm. He's not a guy that's going to wow you with any of his ability, but he can make the play. That's pretty much what Keeler likes about him. He makes the simple play, makes the read, makes the throw. I think some of this is philosophy. Like I said, they gotta they gotta have to start using a short passing game. They've got to figure out how to get Ife Adegi, who runs, uh, you know, just an insanely fast hundred speed. They got to get the ball in his hands more. They've got to get the ball in Noah Smith in his hands more. Uh, you know, and what, if they can figure out how to do that, I think you'll see a little more explosiveness out of the offense. Uh, but the big thing at quarterback, whether it be Ganell or Shoemaker, is who is getting that ball where it needs to go and accurately. Well, let's pause and talk about Ganell for a second, though, because he is not new to Division One football. Um, yeah. He's been around the block. Uh, is it North Texas, Memphis, Arizona? Is that the order, right? Like this is. I think so. Yeah. This is a guy that's played a lot of Division One football at at fairly large programs, um, and while people at Houston might remember him from Memphis. Um, Talk me through. He hasn't played yet, right? He hadn't completed. He nope. hadn't attempted a pass yet, at least on stat sheets. And I've only watched highlights. I haven't found full games. Um, what What's the deal there? Did he lose a battle? Is he about to take a battle? What's going on there? No, he lost the starting battle. Keegan had the job last year, but it was a it was an open battle. It was all the way through uh, through the camp. I think that uh, I think Keegan won it probably the last week of fall camp, right at the end of fall camp. Uh, they didn't want to say it publicly, but Grant Gannell was right there. They were neck and neck. I think with the struggles that we've seen, the hook on Keegan will be a little quicker this week. They haven't pulled it yet, which, you know, I mean, credit to Keeler. He, he's trying to see what they can do, but I think uh, any struggles out of the quarterback position this week, any, you know, he made a bad read against BYU through a bad interception in the end zone that cost him a chance to get points against the Cougars. So I think any anything like that that you see where he's hurting the offense, I wouldn't be surprised to see Gunnell come in. Um and I, I did have he did play at Memphis, but he was hurt while his hammer that's why he's still eligible to play, frankly, I'd imagine. Yeah. Um and then he ultimately ended up in North Texas and then Sam Houston. Um does do you think in your coverage to the team, because he's a guy that the rest of us might not have seen in a while, um what do you think he brings a different element that Houston's got I mean again an offense out a touchdown, any new element has to be somewhat welcome. Does he bring something that they need? He He's going to bring the exact same things Keegan Shoemaker brings. And I, I think that's, you know, that you look back at there, Eric Schmidt, the quarterback when they won the national title, he's more of kind of a dual threat guy. Grant Gannell, I don't know if he's got quite the legs. Keegan has the legs. Uh, but at the same time right now, it's about making the throws. It's about getting the ball out there, getting it to the guys, getting it there accurately. If Gunnell can do that, then whatever he brings, that by far is what we need. As long it doesn't matter as long as the cats get in the stinking end zone, man. <laughs> well, and it could be the kind of game though where like twenty one points wins the game, right? Like on and like and both oh, defenses yeah. could score on the way to that twenty one, right? Like it could I really could see be... a twenty to seventeen game, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, that's and that's why the over under set at thirty eight. Um, or 38 and a half, or because it's never exactly even, right? But it's going to be a fun one. Um, and frankly, if, if you, I mean, Sam Houston State's a talented opponent, so I don't mean this in a way to disparage them. Yeah, no. But if if Houston loses to Sam Houston State at one and three, um, a one and two in non conference, like there's going to be a lot of questions about a lot of things going on at the University of Houston. Listen, um, if Houston loses this game, no Sam Houston fan would tell you you should. You should not lose. It shouldn't even be discussed as a possibility right now, Parker. That's how bad it is, in my opinion, for Houston right now. The fact that we even bring it up like a possibility is insane to me. But if you are the first FBS win for Sam Houston and it's a Big 12 team, there will be a lot of questions at Houston and – and I think the, the biggest key I have is, have they hit rock bottom yet to where we'll see a team come out with a little more fire and passion this week? Well, and I will say, you know, if you want to talk about coaches and jobs, 
I think the guys that play for Dana really like Dana. And so I think there will be some of that about like, hey, get one for the Gipper kind of stuff. Like we we got to stay above water here, fella. I think there will be some of that because they got, you know, it looked past Rice. Um, they couldn't put up an offensive touchdown. They scored in special teams. They couldn't put up an offensive touchdown against TCU. And frankly, like I know UTSA is very talented, and, and frankly, I think Rice is going to end up surprise people this year too. But oh yeah, um, I like UTSA gave them all they could handle. Houston won that game, so one win so far, yep. but that was tough. And so I could see this being a struggle of a game for a number of reasons. Um, Houston's got the athletes, and, and so I think that you know, in our Friday episode, we'll be previewing like the big three things they got to do. But they just got to kind of calm down and play. I think is part of it too. Um, I think so, and they do like playing because who wouldn't like to play for Holgerson? Oh, uh, if you're I mean, an offensive Holgerson's guy, fun. if yeah. you're an offensive guy, he lets you. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, there's well, a reason uh, that so many skilled receiver guys show up to play for him. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, and there, there's a reason he, you know, he, he's. He's one of those guys you want to go to the bar with and, and talk to also, right? Like he he can relate to the to the youth. And that's uh that's a big part of being a coach right now. So I am a li- I, I've been surprised he hasn't been more successful at Houston yet. Well, and you know, I think that there's some of that relatability he has with maybe the kids he coaches they doesn't have with the rest of the media and fans, and that may be rubbing people the wrong way, but Hopefully we we get into all those kinds of things at a much later date and not this Monday. Hopefully, I mean, my Cougar fans and I hopefully are, are looking for um, something a little more positive. But you and your folks are following the Bearcats yeah. all over uh, Dave Campbell's Texas football. So tell people one more time, where they, can they find you, your podcast, your written work, et cetera? Where can they find you? Well, first off, if the Cats can score a touchdown this week or two touchdowns, even if they lose, it will be a successful game. Honestly, that's that's about where the, the Bearcats fans are when it comes to the offense. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Parker, no, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. TexasFootball.com. You can find me there at Corey Hogue Sports. Find me on that's uh, all, any social media. You can find me under that name. Uh, man, Texas, TexasFootball.com. We have all kinds of stuff. It's getting better. Check out those team pages, Parker. They may help you. Up in the top, you've got team pages. It was, you can kind of scroll and get to Houston. You go in there now, you get depth charts and rosters and things of that nature. Uh, for all the all the FBS teams in Texas have depth charts and stuff uh, that are being loaded in there. So it, good things are happening at TexasFootball.com. It's definitely the place to go to for all your high school and, and college football information. Completely. And frankly, it's the Bible of Texas football as far as the state goes. Um, and I still remember yeah. being a high school athlete, like looking forward to like junior year, like, oh, my name's in the, like, like at the back page of the magazine. And if right? you want to find our podcast, it's March to the pod. It's March, the number two, the pod. It's all one word on the social media. You find that and you wonder why in the world a, a podcast would be named March to the pod. Our very first episode explains every bit of it because every <laughs> everything in the name is attached to sam houston state university in some way <laughs> everything so every part of that name is <laughs> that's the teaser if you want to go check that out <laughs> well, it involves a, it involves puppies it involves general sam houston i, I mean we combine general sam houston with puppies man we got a podcast <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on today, Corey. Puppies, podcasting, what else could you want? <laughs> exactly. We got it all over there. March to the pod. <laughs> all right. So thank you to Corey for coming on today. It was great to have an expert on the small side of college football across the state of Texas to break down all things Sam Houston State. Make sure you go follow him and the great work he's doing over at Dave Campbell's. They're doing a great job with their covering all kinds of things all across Texas. It's the Texas football Bible and Corey is the guy covering these smaller non FBS schools, which Sam Houston State obviously is coming just out of. So make sure you go give him a follow and check out the work he's doing. Thank you all so much for making Locked on Cooks your first listen of the day. Remember, Locked on Cooks, the primary Locked on podcast network. And that means your team every day. Go Cooks. <laughs>